Hi everyone, I'm Ruth Ann Richards and welcome to this week's Intuition Insight vlog for week of 27th of June. This is not the video I'd intended to put out this week, I'd recorded something else. But events happened on Friday in the US that got me and many of the feminists angry. And it made me think how challenging it is today to be spiritual in the world. So today I'm going to talk about spirituality and being angry because it's okay. We think because we're spiritual, we have to be a certain way in the world and we can't be angry. We can't have any negative emotion that we must always try and stay positive. We're humans. That's just not possible for us to do that all the time. And it's okay to feel angry. And I want to talk to you today about sacred anger and righteous activism. Because being spiritual does not stop you from being an activist. It does not stop you from speaking your mind. It's important that we do this. It's very important to us that we do this. So the reason I changed my vlog for this week is based on what happened last Friday in the US that an elitist group have decided that women do not have the constitutional right to make decisions over their own bodies. And why is that a spiritual matter? It matters because I'm a spiritual person and I feel angry about that decision. That's why it matters. So if there's some element of the world that you're angry with, but at heart you believe you're a spiritual person, it's okay. And in this video, I want to talk about how do we live our everyday life in this crazy world, being spiritual, but also having these feelings of anger um, and the other feelings that we get that don't always feel spiritual to us. Because staying spiritual in the world today is a chuffing challenge. It's been a chuffing challenge for centuries for women, but we're feeling it today. It's the inequality that we see in the world that makes me angry. So how can we stay spiritual and angry? How can that happen? It's because we're human beings and it's okay to feel that anger. Now I'm going to refer to my notes a lot today because all this is in my head and I had to write it down. So bear with me as I go through my notes. So I came across sacred anger and righteous activism a little while ago and those phrases really resonated with me because it's right for me to have anger about the things that are not aligned to my values. It's completely okay, I'm a human, I'm allowed to do that. The question is, what do you do with it? And some people become activists and that's the righteous activism. So let's talk about being spiritual in everyday life at the moment and what can you do about it? What can you do about feeling angry and all those negative emotions? The first thing is do not suppress the emotion. Let it out. We know that for our own psychological well-being, the suppression of emotions can cause low mood, it can cause depression, it can give us mental health issues and psychological health issues. So the first thing is acknowledge it within yourself and find a way to let that emotion out. Go into the garden and scream at the top of your voice if you have to. Or maybe you want to write down your feelings on a piece of paper and then perhaps burn it if that helps you. But mind your fingers with the matches. You talk to someone like your nearest and dearest or a best friend, know how you feel, but you do need a channel and outlet to say what it is that is making you angry or is causing that negative emotion. At the weekend, I was at a family event for my niece's 16th birthday and I fell into conversation with her dad and we quickly got onto the state of the world right now and we both had the same feelings about what happened in the US last week and more broadly about women's rights. Now he has a vested interest, he has a wife and two daughters, so he definitely has a vested interest in the subject of women's rights. And my 16 year old niece is angry about what happened in the US. And one of the birthday gifts I gave to her was a book called Be the Change by Gina Martin. And Gina Martin is the amazing young woman um, who campaigned to make upskirting uh, illegal in the UK. Marvellous woman she is. I've given her that book so I've got high hopes she might become an activist, uh, my niece. But whatever she chooses is up to her, but I'll be in her corner if she does. She's written this book, Be the Change, and it's a handbook on how to be an activist. So... Maybe there's something new that you need to do that can help you be an activist. But whatever you do, allow that emotion out in some way. Talking to someone who shares your view and is willing to help you can help you process the anger, sadness, confusion, whatever negative emotion you deem it to be. But always bring yourself back to a place of compassion. 
The reality is that many of those in positions of power around the world, and they're mostly men, are exerting this kind of control and influence because they are deeply, deeply insecure and perhaps even deeply unhappy. Think about it. If you are secure in your own values, you don't need to control other people. You don't need to shove your values down other people's throat. You don't need to start a conflict or scream or shout. You know what you believe and you are steadfast and strong in that. Perhaps like me, you believe that every human on the planet is equal. And you don't need to prove your own superior, superiority, if I can say it, or, this, or, your, or prove that support, superiority by making decisions about other people's lives. So know your values, feel them, and feel those values from a place of compassion and treat everyone with compassion regardless of their views. That's how we start to create meaningful change. And it's how you can start to live that spiritual life every day, regardless of what's going on in the world. And start feeling that compassion with those around you, right? I'm sure many of you have a relative um, that just presses your buttons because you have such divergent views. Start there with that and with that person. Understand that relative is a result of their conditioning and upbringing. You don't have to agree with them, but you don't have to control or exert your influence on them either. You just have to stand in your own values, stand in your own ground and be compassionate towards them. What else can you do? Be around people who share your values. You can find them in the most unexpected places. I was at a concert at the weekend on Saturday night and the support act was a guy called Curtis Steigers and he actually referenced the US Supreme Court decision um, in his set, which I thought was really brave. He said there's only one reaction men should have to what women choose to do with their bodies and then he stepped back away from the microphone and he was silent. It was really powerful. It was a powerfully delivered message. It was delivered with heart. It was definitely delivered with heart and soul. And the crowd went wild. And I fell in love a little bit with this guy at that point when he said that. So you find support in the most unexpected of places. But talk to your friends. Spend time hanging out with people who share your values. Find a community that suits you. I host a community called the Intuition Circle and we talk about empowerment and women's values all the time. We also talk about vaginas a lot in terms of women's health and how the medical profession over centuries has kind of misunderstood the support that women need. But that's mainly because we're all women in the circle. If men join the circle, then I guess we'll talk about vaginas and penises too, because, you know, we believe in equality. But there is strength in numbers of people who share the same values. Talk together about the change you want to see in the world. This is important. Allow the anger out, but don't keep bitching or moaning about it. Focus on what it is you want to see in the world, the change you want to see. Because if you know anything about manifesting or co-creating with the universe, you know that you have to focus on what it is that you want and you have to feel it. So the more of you coming together to talk about the change you want to see in the world, in your communities, in your little groups, it doesn't matter if it's just two of you, there is strength in so many people doing that because you know what happens for manifesting and co-creating. We're told to focus on what you want. And so whether you focus on something good or bad, that's what you can manifest. So just imagine the more of us getting together to do this and focusing on the change we want to see in the world. So those are some things you can do to stay spiritual in this everyday life, but still feeling anger and those negative emotions. So yes, vent your feelings, it's psychologically healthy. But when you've done that, focus on the change you want in the world and talk to others about it to increase that focus. The more of us doing this, the more the balance tips our way. So whatever injustice in the world is making you angry, it's okay. It shows you're human and a human being doing your best to live a spiritual life. But deep anger can go one of two ways. It can destroy. Those with deep insecurities are angry about everything in the world, which is why they have to exert their control on other people. Or deep anger can be a catalyst for change. Find an outlet for your anger and let it be a catalyst for change in your life. That catalyst starts with you, your friends, family, the people immediately around you that are close to you. And the catalyst is the conversation about the change you want to see in the world. 
Imagine if all the feminists around the world started these discussions with their closest friends and family. Imagine the vibrational frequency that would create in the universe. And then that would be a revolution. Not the typical patriarchal revolution, but a compassionate, focused, intentional, meaningful and purposeful, intuitive rev revolution. And then trust, trust that together we can create this intuitive revolution for the future that we all deserve. Thanks for watching and listening. If you want to find out more about my community, The Intuition Circle, you can check the information below this video. And if you like what I said today and it resonates with you and you feel we have shared values, please leave a comment. Please like this video and share it with other people who you think can support this as well. Thanks. Bye.